Welcome to the Spiritual Development Channel. I'm Nasi Yashuva. Welcome back. Today, our lesson is spirit slash consciousness versus the soul. I'm going to make in-depth information simple to understand. But before we get started, subscribe, like, and share. And if you like the information, please support me on Cash App, Cash Tag Nasi Yashuva. I don't care if you send a dollar. Everything is appreciated. Let's get into the information. This picture right here is a picture of a Dogon priest. And the ancient priests of most civilizations were there to use physical property and matter and sentient beings such as animals and plants to convey a message that's happening into the spiritual realm. And this is the basis or the foundation of your logograms and hieroglyphics. They're conveying spiritual understanding by using animals, plants, and other things. So here in the Hebrew text, you have the word ruach, which literally means wind or breath. But it's translated as spirit because it can't be seen. So now in the beginning of Genesis, you have Ruach Elohim. Elohim is power. Translated into the Greek, it becomes elector. Then into the English, it becomes electricity. So there have this wind or a thing that can't be seen that animates everything into existence. And in some of our ancient writings, that's the prana, that's the chi. We're going to get there, right? We're getting there step by step. So let's go. The spirit is the purest form of consciousness. It's not tainted. It is the overarching level of control. It can tell you what to do in order to survive. Your soul is your emotions and your thoughts and your will. Because in the Hebrew word, the word is nefesh, which actually means neck, which alludes to your desire, things that you like or your intentions. This is why it says, worship me with all your soul, meaning that your intentions should be of God. But let's go into the book of Yerugu where we're given the interpretation of the spirit. The creative force that unites all phenomena. It is the source of all energy, motion, cause and effect. It becomes more dense and manifest in manner. It is the meaningful level of existence, spirituality. The apprehension of cosmic interrelationship and appreciation of meaning in existence and the degree to which one is motivated by such meaning. Spirituality is one's ability to relate to the metaphysical level of experience. It unites thoughts, feelings, and thereby allows for intuitive understanding. The cognitive effective sense is transmitted through collective ancestral relationships. The absence of spirituality is the ancestral legacy. All right. Hey, you see, spirit is connected to the heart. The spirit resonates in the heart. The heart transforms to the soul. The soul transforms to the brain and the body. And this goes into a cycle, right? The pure essence resonates in the heart. And the soul is the center. And what of the soul goes into the brain and to the body? Look at this. Now, let's look at the soul. It appears that the soul is the filter to all spirituality in the body. It's the in-between man. So we know if our car filter is dirty, our body and our brain begins to malfunction. We think negative thoughts. We think bad. And, our, we, and then sickness becomes a part of us. And illness starts to mess up our electromagnetic field and throw us off. So it's our intentions to keep our intentions pure because it allows us to resonate with the spirit. But now scientists have discovered that there's what they call a morphogenetic field that surrounds all sentient beings. This morphogenetic field, the spirit allows and gives information on how to survive and evolve to exist. Remember, we're on the planes of this world for the sake of, to reverse entropy, meaning that we have to destroy or reverse energy going into chaos. So now our soul is dictating our evolution. See, science says we, we're born to evolve and there's no God. Well, there is now a field that surrounds every human being that teaches them how to evolve. Now look at fish. How do they swarm together? Are they sending bulletins? Are they texting each other? There's a field that conveys this information that they easily tapped into because their filter is pure. 
Now, so each individual has an individual field, but when it comes together with groups, it becomes a collective field, a cultural field, because each culture had to adapt to its environment in order to survive. But there was a spirit around these entities that came together, that collective consciousness, which was something that governed people to survive. So this is why cultures are different. So let's think of it. Angels as laws of physics. The angels are laws of physics. Just think about it. If evolution is a law of physics, then our angels would not only be the personal morphic genetic field, but the collective consciousness that we have. And remember in the story of Daniel, the angel came and he said that he was being held up by the Persian angel. So now you see two cultural collective consciousness coming together. Keep this in mind. Two cultural consciousness coming together and colliding and they're warring with each other. Now let's go back. In the garden, we were pure and we didn't have anybody to be an intermediate between us and God. And two, we were cast out and our connection to God were through the laws of physics. So now what is it about the struggle of African Americans inside of this diaspora? Is it that we do not have the collective consciousness that we need? Could it be that if we tap into the pureness of survival, that we will come together and overcome and overthrow the system that we're under. And our angel, which represents the collective consciousness, will prevail. See, we have individual goals and aspects that separate us from our pure, pure, pure spirit. It is the I and not the we. The collective consciousness allows us to see that which is coming and allow us to evolve and prepare for disaster. Do we not see this with the prophets in the story of Noah? He was given what it took to survive what was to come because his intentions was pure. We see it all throughout the book. Allow your intentions to be for the survival of the human race and the existence of a God-like community and kingdom. And there the individual aspects of who we are will all diminish. The greed, the self-want, the not creating communities. This story is resonated in the raven and the dove. The dove was sent by Noah, which represents God, to do the intentions and he came back. But the raven went off to itself. Who are you? Are you the raven or the dove? Is your intentions, your soul, pure enough to manifest the pureness of high consciousness, which is the Ruach? Thank you.